Hey everybody, Mike Peasall, Pastor at Gateway Christian Center here in beautiful Goodlitzville, Tennessee. Today is Wednesday, February the 7th, and today's Mike's Midweek Message. I'm glad you could join me. So today's topic is choosing not to be offended. Um, it, it seems like we world, live in a world of, of offense. People are either always trying to offend somebody or, or people are always looking for how they are being offended. And sometimes it can get pretty silly, but there are times that just in the normal course of the day uh, that someone will either purposefully or accidentally, they'll offend us, they'll hurt us, they'll, they'll wound us in some way. Uh, maybe they'll accuse us of something we didn't do, or they'll overlook something that we did do, um, or they'll pull us in in some way and, and um, kind of uh, impugn our personality or our, our behavior traits or just generally just poke us in the eye. And so uh, um, I had a kind of a situation like that this week come up uh, where I was I was talking to a friend and uh, he had been through uh, a wounding like that. And after I was finished talking to him, I, I realized, you know, I, there's actually another option in how to deal with that. And that is to choose not to be offended. Well, that's that doesn't mean that that offense doesn't hurt, but what it means is that we, we look at it a little bit differently than, than we tend to look at it. So um, what if instead of being offended by the person, we look to see, is there a reason the person has has taken this shot at us? Is there a reason this person has said what they said? Maybe it has nothing to do with us. Maybe, uh, maybe because this person is in the process of themselves hurting over something, uh, that, that they either intentionally or unintentionally just kind of they're letting that bounce off of them and, and hit the people around them. So many times uh, we get the most hurt by the people who uh, we care the most about and who care the most about us. But again, uh, what we have to do is we have to kind of peel back and, and instead of instead of immediately um, um, throwing our hands up in, an offensive, in a defensive manner, uh, we need to stop defending ourselves and just see, is there a reason this person is attacking us. You know, to, to defend yourself is pretty normal. Uh, you know, something starts falling towards you and you'll, you know, you'll uh, throw your hand up or, um, and then when it comes to verbal assaults, um, when it comes to emotional assaults, well, we do the same thing. We, 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 def we try to protect ourselves, defend ourselves, you know, deflect that. And we've talked about that in the past. But what I want to talk to you about today is uh, something Jesus said in the Sermon on the Mount, pretty important time. Uh, my wife and I went to see the, the first three episodes of the next season of The Chosen last night at the theater. I highly recommend it. Um, it, it's, it, is not, it is not the Bible. It is a movie of, 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 that I think does a really good job of giving you a feel of what was going on during that time with Jesus and with his people. I, I just encourage that side note um, because I don't want anybody to attack me over this. Um, but but when, when he's given the Sermon on the Mount, he says a lot of things. He talks about who's blessed. He talks about, you know, how we're supposed to respond to each other. But here's one of the things that, that he says in the Sermon on the Mount. And, um, and it's from Matthew chapter 5 verses 38 through 42. Let me read it to you. You have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. That was the law. Uh, but I say to you, do not resist the, e the one who is evil. But if anyone slaps you on the right cheek, turn, turn to him the other also. So uh, as I understand it, this wasn't necessarily about a physical blow, but this was about um, that the, the person was uh, was attacking your character. They were trying to humiliate you. They were trying to belittle you. Um, and I think it applies also to the physical blow, but I think we miss it sometimes when we think this is just about somebody walks up and slaps you, then you're supposed to immediately turn the other cheek. But it, it goes beyond that. So verse 40, if anyone would sue you and take your tunic, let him have, uh, let him have your cloak as well. In other words, this is what they require. Go beyond what they're requiring from you. 41. And if anyone forces you to go one mile, go with him two miles. It, it was, it was Roman law that, um, that they could make, they could, they could basically pull a person off the road and they could make them go with them one mile, carry their package with them for one mile. But then when you hit that one mile mark, 
that you no longer had an obligation. You could drop that package and you could you could go go back home. But Jesus said, if if they want you to go one mile, go two miles. Why would he say that? Well, because if you go two miles, it gives you an opportunity to influence them. You're not just doing what you have to do, but you're going beyond what you have to do, which usually makes people go, that's that's really weird. Why are you going the extra mile? Um, and then verse 42, give to the one who begs from you and do not refuse the one who would borrow from you. Okay, now we know Jesus is all the time. He, he's all the time talking about the law. He doesn't dismiss the law. But what he's saying is, he's saying, instead of just loving the law, follow the law of love. See, there, there is a difference there because the law would allow you to get even. The law would allow you to do all these different things to set the score even. And Jesus is saying, forget about setting the score even and concentrate on loving a person. I think that ties in with, with my original uh, question about can we choose to not be offended? Sure, you, you can get even. I mean, if you, well, I, 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 I deserve the right to clear my name. I deserve the right to defend myself. I deserve the right. But what if you laid that right down and then instead of that, you said, I'm going to go beyond that. And I'm going to see why is the person reacting that way? What's going on in that person's life? that would, would make me go, you know what? Um, I could defend myself. I could, I could spend some energy and time trying to prove to you that I'm not what you just said I am. Or I could use that same energy and I could go, hey, what's going on deep down that would make you lash out at me like this? What's going on that would make you uh, take the shot that you took? So um, there's, there's always room for leveling the accounts. But Jesus always wants us to go above and beyond. Now, now one of the things that he says there, he says um, to not resist evil. Now, that's different than whenever he tells us to resist the evil one. This isn't talking about, uh, the, you know, don't resist Satan. It's talking about resisting the, the hurt, resisting the urge to get even, uh, res resist that that um, what we, is legal and lawful, but resist the urge to make things right. Instead, go beyond that because well, obviously he wants us to resist the evil one satan and all the demonic forces that are with him and here, here's a pretty cool thing jesus said to his disciples which means he said it to us all authority is given to me and i give it to you so that you can go so we can stand against the evil one we can resist the evil one um so why have you done this thing to me is the question we usually ask when somebody when somebody does that you know they wound us they attack us they say something bad about us either to our face or to people and, and we immediately wonder why would you say this about me but instead maybe what we need to do is say what's going on in your life that would make you say this about me because most of the time like i said most of the time the people who say things that wound us are people who are in our inner circle. They're the people who, who we love and we believe they love us. And so we, we should give them the benefit of the doubt and go, okay, maybe there's something going on back here that, that would make me uh, want to ask, can I help you in some way? Instead of, instead of defending myself, maybe I need to defend you. Maybe you need somebody to defend you. I, I heard this story years ago, and I don't know if it's true. I believe it is probably I know that it's at least based on some things that we've seen happen, but it's about this woman, um, and and uh, she was she was flying flying back home from point A to point B, you know, and and she gets on the flight and she's in her seat and and it's almost time for them to push away from uh, from from the airport and and get on you know taxi out to the runway, and uh, like at the last minute, this uh, this young man and two children come staggering onto the plane, and you can just tell this guy. His, uh, he is just not there. He is like somewhere else mentally. And the kids are wild and they're crazy and they're, uh, they're you know, they, they, they are distraught. And, and uh, it, you know, it looks like, uh, you know, it's like obviously something's going on here. And she just thought to herself, oh, my gosh, this is going to be horrible. And sure enough, it was horrible. The, the kids were completely um, beside themselves, they were they were up, they were down, they were they were talking, they were crying, they were just all this stuff. And what really irritated the lady was, she said that the the guy who she assumed was the father, just was a zombie, just never looked, never talked to the kids, never never corrected the kids, uh, you know, she, he didn't try to rein the kids in. And so uh, the flight's over, and she thinks, oh, thank God, we finally get off of this horrible plane ride. 
And um, as she's moving through the through the cabin, you know, when she's hearing other people kind of whisper and, and behind her and, you know, this like, oh, man, can you believe that was horrible? That was horrible. And then she gets close enough to now she's coming up to where the flight attendants are and as people are exiting and they're talking back and forth. And she overhears that this young man, this young father and these two children were on their way to where his wife had been tragically killed. He was a zombie because he was he 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 didn't know what to do. He he didn't he, he had so many things going on in his own mind and his own heart that he couldn't deal with his children. That wasn't a priority. But what instantly happened with that lady was an attitude shift, where she went from from wanting to just tell that guy, "Oh man, you are just the worst father ever," and and you're the worst human being ever because how dare you bring these children on and ruin my flight and all this. And all of a sudden, her heart turned to compassion, and she was like, "Oh, how can I minister to this young man? How what should I have done?" To, to, you know, I could have, I could have talked to those little kids, I, but she didn't know. Okay. True story, not true story. I don't know. But you and I both know that there are times like that, that we just assume when we see someone uh, attack us or we see somebody attack another person or we see somebody do something that we, we interpret as a very negative behavior. We don't know what's caused that negative behavior. And instead of worrying about ourselves and defending ourselves and protecting ourselves. Maybe we drop that for a minute. We go, you know what? I'm not going to, I'm not going to, I'm going to not be offended by this. And I'm going to go see what's going on. Now, it may be that when you get there, you find out, yeah, the guy is indeed a jerk and, and all the other stuff. You know, and at that point, you're, you're not even offended anymore because you realize, what do I care? But we miss an opportunity to minister when we allow ourselves to be sidetracked by our own personal offense. Now, what would happen um, on social media, if instead of being offended by that person who's, you know, they're trolling you and every time you say something uh, that goes against them, they, they lash, lash out at you. What if you just let that go and go, you know what? Hey, look, if I could pray for you in some way, that'd be awesome. Uh, what about that, that coworker? What about that, uh, that person who's in school with you? What about that person who's at church? You, you know, it's funny when we get to heaven. Um, I don't, I don't think, I don't think we're going to be able to like, uh, walk around the parking lot so we don't have to walk in with that person who's supposedly our brother in Christ, but we are so offended at them that we will not sit with them. That, okay, it's going to be a little different in heaven. I, I know. I know it's going to be different in heaven. So I just want to encourage you this week, look for, for opportunities to not be offended. Look for opportunities to, instead of being offended, use that energy to go, I wonder if there's something going on in this person's life where I could insert a little love of Jesus. Uh, and instead of, instead of loving the law, I'm going to go by the law of love. I hope you have a great week, and I will see you next Wednesday.